This video is a demonstration of the microfluidic phenomena used in our device for detecting drug-induced lupus. The first experiment demonstrates the separation of the red nanoparticles from solution using capillary force and gravity. Gold nanoparticles in solution and silica beads are used in this experiment. The gold nanoparticles are analogs of blood cells, while the solid represents blood serum. The bead pack structure promotes two separation principles. First, the porous filter impedes nanoparticle movement, slowing large particle flow while allowing smaller water molecules to flow more freely. Second, the large surface area of the packed column applies capillary force on the solution. This is a similar demonstration using a pressure gradient to drive flow. Here are some governing equations for capillary action based on container diameter. The column on the right represents a collection of small cylindrical capillaries, allowing greater capillary action to occur. As a result, a higher fluid level can be observed in the right column. Here is a side view of our microfluidic channel for sensory purposes. Blood plasma will flow through the channel and an antigen-coated electrode will be used to detect antigen-antibody interaction. In typical microfluidic systems, laminar flow will occur within this channel. However, this prevents distal antigen-specific antibodies from coming into contact and binding with the antigens deposited on the electrode. Here is a top view of the hearing bone structure on the microfluidic channel. The grooves in the channel generate laminar helical flow demonstrated by the movement of the red antibodies shown in this animation. To summarize, integrating a hearing bone structure into our original channel will allow antibodies to travel closer to the electrodes, increase their contact area, and increase the chance of them binding to the electrodes. Here is another schematic of helical flow generated by the hearing bone structure.